Okay, so good morning, everybody, and welcome to Live with Nat, another Monday morning. Uh, I'm here with multiple uh, award, uh, award winning, well, you are award winning author, um, uh, Wael Ibrahim from uh, Perth, nice and early over in the West. And you can see he's written four books uh, behind him, three. Uh, through our program and system and publishing company. And he's also been quietly working on his fifth book, which we're going to talk about this morning and thus uh, why he's, um, you know, the title of this subject. And I'm curious, you know, to find out even more because I haven't had a chance to catch up with him. Usually we'd go to Perth and you'd come and have a drink or a coffee before our event the next day. So how have you been, Well? Excellent. Thank you, Nat, for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And I really appreciate your time and getting up nice and early this morning. No so problem. you've had quite, quite a journey, um, you know, over the last, um, you know, I mean, I've known you, what, five or six years now? I think about five years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I remember that day we met at the, you know, at the Subi play venue where we, uh, you know, we were originally met and you, you were never going to do anything. And then that yeah. evening I was <laughs> going to... I don't know where are we? Adelaide and then we were having a phone chat and um yeah so how was how did that all come about maybe take me back what were your thoughts back then on that journey yeah I was uh, I was new to Australia so I didn't know anything yet about how things are being operated I uh, I just uh, I had that book idea on my mind for a long time, piles of notes everywhere on the same subject, and I wanted to compile them. Actually, the first book change, which you mentioned, it's not uh, part of uh, your publishing uh, work. Uh, it's not really a book. It's, it was like a, a plan planner for those who are addicted to internet. Now it's gonna fall down. So, <laughs> don't, don't do the domino. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so uh, it wasn't really a book, just rather, a planner for those who are addicted to internet. But then I, I came to this uh, half day, this crazy lady wanted to uh, wanted us to write a book within 48 hours. I said, let's see that's, uh, how do they do these things? And then when I uh, came there, I said, no way, you know, it's not gonna work for me. But that phone call you made uh, late at night that same day, uh, we yeah. immediately clicked. I immediately I felt like, no, 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 she know what she's talking about. We attended mm. the uh, retreat and I couldn't mm. believe myself within three months after that, the book was out. Yeah, amazing. So that was Beated, The Fifty Shades of Hope. That was that particular first book. Yes, that yeah. was the Could first one, Beated, one there. Beated yeah. 50 Plus Shades of Hope. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it really had a, a tremendous impact, positive impact on the lives of so many people. Like The feedback that I received after the publication of this book was amazing. A course was developed after that in diff uh, from different different perspective. One from a spiritual mm. perspective. You know that I'm uh, mostly handling the Muslim community around the world, uh, and and one is for non-religious. Like it it was it was an amazing experience. Like throughout this journey of writing. Yeah, totally. And I know you have such a big following. When I saw how many people you inspire and how many people follow you and listen to you, the books are just a tool that you um, bring to them that can help them. So let me, I, I kind of fast track that. I like talking to you, so I forgot even to properly introduce you. So let me like go through your uh, proper introduction and we'll go into the particular topic we're talking about now or today, which is about the fifth book that is um, on the cards and has been written while you've had some challenges in your health. So let me give you the official introduction. So while Ibrahim is the founder of the Aware, uh, Aware Academy, which is a platform dedicated to helping those who are struggling with pornogra pornography addiction. He is the author of several books, namely Change, a motivational system to break free from undesirable habits, uh, especially pornography. Beat it, 50 Shades of Hope, then Better Me, which was his third book, 365 Ways to Transform Your Everyday Life, and his latest work titled Aware, Find Out Who, who You Are Without Porn. While Ingrahim is a certified master life coach and currently is the student counsellor of the Australian Islamic College in Perth, Australia. So he is based in Perth, Australia. But today's yep. topic is about uh, my wheelchair, my journey of coming back on my feet. So can you tell me a little bit now, bring me up to speed as to 
especially these last six months or six to 12 months of what's been going on? Yeah, actually uh, uh, over a year now. So uh, last year, just like these days, April 5th in particular, oh. I was uh, getting ready for school for term two. It was on a weekend. Uh, yeah. preparing my uh, lesson plans, going through all my work for my students. And then I visited the, the toilet. And then as I exited, I'm washing my hands over the sink and bam, a crashing pain went through my waist, my knees, my ankles. And I was pinned to the ground for over three plus hours, screaming like a little girl. Uh, my wife, my children rushed to help me. I, I couldn't even speak. I couldn't tell them what was going on. Uh, finally, I was breathing because the pain was excru excruciating. I couldn't imagine to experience such a pain. Uh, and I didn't know what it was. I, I have experienced back pain in the past, but this was something absolutely different. And yeah. after three, four hours, um, you know, doctors visited. They gave me some painkillers, which didn't work. Uh, I, I visited my GP the next day. That, that night was a sleepless night and uh, sleepless nights followed like uh, I think a month after that like uh, wow. I would I would be knocked out because of the pain I would wake up because of the pain that was my life for about one month until they put me on harder drugs and stuff like that and it turns out that it was uh, uh, slip discs on both sides on the lumbar area so the entire lumbar area basically five vertebrae were crashed left and right and I couldn't walk. Uh, I couldn't actually lift up myself for a couple of months. I think five months was really difficult time. I uh, was wheelchair bound. And of course, a lot of emotional battles went, uh, uh, you know, went on for, for a long time subhanAllah, to actually get back to my mental clarity and, 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 and did you some lessons like why it happened? You know, I'm a spiritual person, so I was, reflecting over this maybe there is something bigger that i need to uh, focus on and uh, you taught us uh not to focus on uh, what we can change like the things that we are in control that's mm -hmm. what we should focus on otherwise if we just cried over our condition we never get anything done and that was my condition for about a month too uh, mm -hmm. the pain is persisting until now even though i had a surgery last september and uh, I could walk now, I could walk, but I have a lot of numbing still and weakness around my waist area, my legs, my buttocks, my toes and so on. But I can walk, I'm back on my feet. And, uh, and this idea, my wheelchair, my journey of uh, getting back on my feet was actually uh, the idea that was born on my sick bed, basically. I, I started uh, drafting the ideas the days of my comfort uh, in Hong Kong City, the first uh, uh, five years in Australia and how blessed I am and I, I, uh, how blessed I am having family who supported me during this very tough time. And, uh, yeah. and how could I use that? How could I use that to inspire people? And how can we tell them that even when we experience discomfort, it is not actually a discomfort, it's just an opportunity for us to do something different. And this is exactly what uh, happened I started writing that journey and the lessons learned. And man, uh, within, uh, within one year, I'm uh, up on my feet, back to my work, functioning as usual and even more. Yeah, I love it. I, I mean, you obviously have worked a lot on your mindset over, you know, the five years I've known you and you've certified as a coach and you inspire a lot of people. You've done a lot of massive speaking gigs around the world and all that sort of stuff. So what are maybe the three main things that you you know you gave an example of what you remembered me say but what are some other things and tools that you use because i'm sure there's a lot of people i mean this COVID pandemic put everyone at discomfort didn't it so yes. we all had to and and like you say some people said you know what this is an opportunity to do something different which is a lot of us what we're doing right now um and related to health it's also a similar push like it's kind of like sometimes we need that pain to to get out of it. So maybe what were some blessings that you got from, from what happened to you? Uh, uh, my family. I mean, the best blessing ever was uh, to strengthen my tie with my mm -hmm. family, with my children. We had a very, very close bond during this difficult time. Uh, I, mm -hmm. 
again, I would mention the spiritual part. I'm not trying to uh, be religious here or anything, but uh, because I'm a public figure, I, I, I go out a lot talking to people, praying in the mosques and so on. That one year, yeah. it was all dedicated to my family. Now, instead of yeah. teaching thousands and thousands of people online or outside my, my house, I, I focused on my family, children that grew up perhaps uh, not seeing me much uh, around them. So that one year was so beautiful that I have spent quality time, really uh, quantity and quality time with my oh, children yeah. and my wife, uh, praying together, educating each mm -hmm. other, supporting one another. I mean, I found it to be a, a blessing in disguise. Uh, this is one of the, I you said three things? Can say, well, uh, three, well, we can talk about those, but I was saying like, I, 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 I can relate to what you're saying because that's what happened to us as well. I mean, you and I have traveled a lot. We've got on a lot of planes and been in front of a lot of people and our partners have supported us being at home or then Stuart started to come on the road with me, as you would know, and then we would leave and come and leave and come and leave and come. And the blessing of the last 12 months was we've been in each other's faces literally every second of every day, especially you, you would know in Melbourne, we were six months in a, when we collected the amount of time we were in lockdown, a heavy lockdown, we was full six months. So yeah, we were just like literally. <laughs> and, and you, know, you know, during this time, during this time, a lot of reports were coming out that uh, domestic violence uh, is yeah. increasing in Australia. Husbands and wives are beating up each other. I, I was saying like, oh my God, that was actually a beautiful experience for me with my wife and with my children that we have really uh, genuinely missed each other. Like genuinely we missed each other as a result of the nature of what we do. But that one year, even though it was difficult on so many people around the world, sad for so many family family members but for me it was actually a blessing despite the pain it's also the way we you look at it isn't it like you we we can sit and say it was a blessing and find those gifts but how can we help other people who can't see the blessing and say this was the worst thing this is like you know you're a coach i'm a coach so if you had people and clients and they were struggling and they're really stuck in the victim mentality what are some of the advice that you share with them? You, you see, you can't change people as you know, Nat. Mm -hmm. uh, what we can do is to either inspire them and through our inspiration, they will find the ways to change and become better and do something different. Or unfortunately, and that's what I always tell my clients, be careful, you better change through inspiration than through uh, right. traumatic experience. Experiences, you know, people tend to change after seeing something uh, dramatic uh, happening in their in their surrounding. So I always tell them, remember that this has happened to me, and I'm now not on my wheelchair anymore. It took me a while. It was difficult. Life itself is uneasy. Almost everything we do in our life is uneasy, even though we we taste, and that's what I'm discussing in my book. Even though we taste comfort from time to time, it doesn't mean that we are living in paradise. Uh, with that comes a lot of challenges, a lot of, uh, you know, sleepless nights and so on. So experiencing comfort is temporary, but struggle mm -hmm. that bring about comfort is what matters uh, uh, to me, uh, honestly. Like, you know, now I'm, I'm enjoying the struggling phase uh, than the comfort, those moments that we, we, we feel like, wow, we made it, we earned, we did uh, so and so. Uh, so that's that's what I usually talk to my client about to change the mindset. Like think about what we, and this is this is my my utmost most important lesson in life uh, lately is think about what you can change. If you yeah. if you get stuck in in a in a in an addictive cycle basically about things that you have no control over, you will just remain in that condition for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta, yeah, you gotta break the patterns and all that sort of stuff. And certainly assisting people the way you do, uh, doing it on your own is hard, um, especially when you're starting out. Would you agree? Absolutely. That's why I said my family was part of my healing process during this time. If if they were, you know, uh, living on their own on the social media and on the, the devices, leaving me in my bedroom alone, I would have basically thought suicidal because it was yeah. really difficult i 
Uh, Nat, I mentioned that in my book, I actually have seen pain in my dream. And this is something that I can't even verbalize. Uh, mm -hmm. It was snatching my nerves. It was really causing me traumatic uh, issues that I struggled with a lot. And I, uh, I actually reach out to my uh, mentors, my supervisors in the field to, uh, to get me some you know, solace uh, that I could work with. But again, people are very, very important. In fact, in our AWARE Academy, uh, one of the stages that we teach in order for them to get rid of their addiction is to find the supporting system that will help them when uh, things uh, escalate, when their addiction escalate. Because you often can't see it yourself. You, you're stuck in a loop of repeated patterns that are, you know, that they're your comfort zone. So by getting the support, you get pushed out of that comfort zone and you start to take responsibility and then be supported along the path because it's not an easy path is it yeah and sometimes the challenge itself is very difficult for you to build on your own like you need some some more people to, to at least you know pat your shoulder and tell you hey you're gonna go through this like even these mm. encouraging words work magic sometimes yeah i always uh, like you know people um always have so much belief in me but Sometimes I don't believe as much as they believe in me. Like, oh, you'll be all right. You'll sort it out. Like, you know, they, they have this thing. But I actually choose at times to cling on their belief because sometimes mine, like, kind of wavers or I start getting nervous. What if everything falls apart and all that kind of stuff? Do you have those kind of feelings as well? Absolutely. We, we are human beings. We have those, you know, weakness moments in our lives. And, uh, and that's why it's very important to also talk to those that you really trust, you really know they genuinely care for, for you and for your well-being. And that, that carries a lot of weight. So yeah, absolutely. Sometimes we feel like, oh my God, uh, I know Nat said, uh, um, uh, say yes and then work out how, but I can't do anything. I, I can't work it out these days. I, I don't know how to do what to do. I talk to people that I trust and they, uh, they usually sort things out. You know, I, I grew up, uh disorganized person like you know I, I these things took me a lot you know that just displaying my books took me a while to, <laughs> to get them in the background but i have some supervisors and mentors in in organizational skills like whenever i feel like i'm overwhelmed i don't know what to do i have a program i can't fit it in i talk to those people that are good at this and and they get things done for me so uh so long as you talk to people that you trust people that love you genuinely, uh, you will actually go through your problems. Those yeah. problems that you feel like it's very difficult for you to handle on your own. Yeah. And, and you always believe in investing yourself and in people that, you know, can oh. support you on the journey because then that's what gets you there a lot faster. And well, That's how the book was born. I mean, if I didn't follow what you told me over the phone, if I didn't follow also my heart, because I felt like, wow that made a lot of sense uh, i had the content for many many years mm -hmm. and now here's a promise that based on science and based on experience why can't i get it uh, uh i i give it a go and uh, uh it worked absolutely uh well uh, as a result the second book it didn't take much time like you see the yeah. research didn't take much time within one year uh the, the research mm -hmm. and uh your supervision and the publication went smooth and easy and now the the uh, the, the fifth book now it was written from my bedside i mean what blessing could we ask for if we don't have mentors in our lives yeah true so what's the intention with the, this, this being more an autobiographical journey of what's happened to you tell me a little bit about what you want to do with this next book because the other okay. ones are based around obviously overcoming the addiction of pornography and all that kind of stuff they're quite niched in that and you speak a lot, but we know you're a coach and, you know, just people listening to you today would get that sense of, you know, he, he really has overcome lots of different things and challenges in his life. And, and you know, he, and you've got this way about you that's so zen. I always like listening to you because you're always so calm and, you know, pa you pace yourself really well. And I think that works really well for you know, assisting other people, you know? So what is the, the goal and the intention or is it just something that you wanna have as your legacy for your family? Okay, you mentioned the word. Uh, so you see, uh, we started an organization in Hong Kong many years ago, me and my friend uh, who's now in Mauritius. 
And that's yes. exactly what he said to me, that we, we are not establishing this organization for our names. We don't want to be proud of what we did. Rather, we wanted to leave behind a legacy that will survive for so many years to come that will benefit generations after generations. And I was oh my God, who am I to do that? And yeah. uh, I, I also love reading biographies. And when you read the life of Nelson Mandela and, and uh, Malcolm X and those great personalities and see how they live for their principles in order for others to survive after them and live uh, a life of freedom and dignity and so on, then legacy was the word. So that was one of the inspirations from my bedside. I'm a, a mentor, I'm a teacher. Uh, I traveled the world over educating the people from a spiritual perspective on and, and And part of uh, our teaching is to actually uh, teach something that will survive for years to come. And that will be in the scale of your good deeds later on after life. So that's my belief, I said, that's it. So the book, the main intention is to actually inspire people through my experience. Uh, perhaps many around the world uh, are suffering from similar uh, experiences. Maybe that book will offer them a solace, a way to get out of the maze and do something beneficial according to the capacity and what they really can offer others. Yeah, amazing. And um, knowing that you have got quite a bit of a uh, big following, how did that come about? I'm just curious because a lot of people, know. you don't I know. Never, I, I never intended it. I never planned for it. We started that organization, as I mentioned, in Hong Kong about 16, 17 years ago. Yes. And uh, we were pushed, uh, you know, by so many people around us that we can't do it. There are other organizations in town. Who are you? Uh, but those organizations were offering the content in Chinese language, being in Hong Kong, but there was not a single English uh, organization uh, to offer the same content. So we started that organization. And uh, within a year, we invited one scholar who happened to be very famous. Uh, we didn't even know that. We just uh, saw a video and we invited him. He came and bam, the entire organization all of a sudden became an international. And people started inviting me. Uh, to speak. So I started speaking in one event in Hong Kong, yeah. from Hong Kong to Malaysia, Philippines, and things became really big all of a sudden. And, uh, and I didn't really plan. I never even uh, paid any Facebook ad to uh, buy followers or anything like that. It, it just happened that you did the work, you have a pure intention, you don't do it for fame, yeah. for money or anything like that. Uh, and all that came later on, the fame, the money, and all that came later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Oh, well, that's the, you know, and but the main thing is you got to put yourself out there. You had to start something. You had to say yes, and you, you didn't you know, know where it was going to go. You know that you, this is one thing that I wanted to say. Like, you have to if you have something in you that you believe really that you're unique at, and you feel like this is your thing. Focus on that, mm. uh, and flourish in that in that uh, uh, area of of your expertise. And don't think that, uh, you know, don't belittle yourself. Don't, don't think that, oh, so, so many people have written books on the same subject. So many people are speaking about the same thing. But you feel like you have something unique. Just be yourself and yeah. believe that that one, one area in your life can change lives, even in your surrounding. You don't have to become like, you know, the most popular uh, blah, blah, blah in, in the world. Just inspire and influence people positively even in your circle and that would do that would be sufficient yeah and now and some i mean i started out just wanting to have a balanced lifestyle with my family as a coach 11 years ago and as you say i never dreamt that this was turn would turn into hundreds of thousands of people that are you know have learned to listen to me and the over 550 we've done their books and publishing company like what's that that's only in the movies what? it becomes your it becomes your job this is this yeah. something amazing yeah yeah beautiful so how was going through the process let's talk about um obviously you've worked with me multiple times now um you know initially you know doing the full program because the subsequent books we just published we went through a publishing which is what i say to everyone once you've done this process once you should have the tools to then re replicate what you need to do and just come and talk to me about publishing right so how was it the first time you went through it? Oh, the, the, the first time when we had the first session in that uh, resort in, in the hotel, I went mm -hmm. up to, uh, to my room 
during those break sessions that you gave as a homework for us too. Uh, yeah. And I, w I went blank, or although I'm a speaker, like I love to speak yeah. and the idea of speaking your book was like very appealing to me. And then, oh my God, everything went blank. And if you remember Nat, on that uh, day when we arrived, I had a very bad experience, if you remember. Yes, and all my, work, <laughs> uh, all my work that I prepared was literally gone. So I, uh, I was uh, a bit worried. Uh, but once I uttered the first sentence, uh, things came out uh, very flawless. And even uh, mm -hmm. later on, I was, I was worried about uh, liquency. I was worried about uh, grammatical issues because I'm not an English native person. All these things worried me a lot. Uh, but working with your team and the editors, wow, I, I, I sounded very smart at the end. <laughs> <Very fun. laughs> and that's the thing I say to people, you know, you, don't, you just need to get everything's within you. You need to get it out as long as you can speak you can write and we can capture that voice because also it's very important that everyone has their own flavor and voice which is what you said before who cares if a lot of people have written books on a similar even, topic even the author you know i was reading the other day the miracle morning do you know that book by uh oh man i forgot the author's name that's bad that's very bad you shouldn't forget <laughs> the author's name but anyway the it's name? called it's called the miracle morning I've said, yeah, no, I don't know the author as well, but I've read it. Oh, I've author, read it. Uh, Il, Il, Ilrod, I think. Hal, Hal Ilrod, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's but a, a strange actually, name. <laughs> yeah, he was actually saying in the introduction that he, he couldn't, when, when his friend suggested that he should write about his uh, experience, because he also had a big bad ac accident and so on. And when his friend suggested that he should write a book, he said he don't know how to read. He have now a series of books under the same title and look at him now he flourished and he's introduced as an author although he admitted in his book that he couldn't write he didn't know how to write but definitely once you have something in you even if you speak it a little bit even if you narrate it to someone who can verbalize mm -hmm. that in, in writing who can put it in, in words in a in a better nice decent way that would be your book still the idea is yours the yeah. passion is yours the words is someone helping you to put it in a in a nice manner. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone can do it. So where can people get your books out well? Well, so uh, uh, at the moment, there is one website uh, called awareacademy.com.au. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's down these days. So if you made slash products, then you go immediately to the section where you can purchase all my books. So don't Beautiful. forget the slash products, otherwise you'll go you'll end nowhere. So awareacademy.com.au slash products, then you will find all my books. Uh, at the moment they are on PDF format, on ebook format, because mm -hmm. we ran out of physical books. Yeah. And of course on Amazon they are available as well. Yeah, so I was gonna say that <laughs> on all good online uh, book so stores that if you look up the titles, better me, beat it, aware under while Ibrahim you will be able to find them. And I'm sure through the print on demand system, they can fulfill a physical book order as well. But Absolutely. it's great yeah. to hear that you've sold out. And at the moment, you've got them available as uh, e-versions on your website, awareacademy.com.au forward slash products. And of course, if you guys uh, want to write a book and go through these experiences, so talk about publishing, writeabook.com.au, as simple as that is our website. And, um, and I just want to take this moment while to really thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've loved watching your journey. I've loved, you know, interacting and catching up with you, not just, you know, as an author, but just to get to know you as a real person. You had a transformational weight loss journey as well, which I'm sure you're going to share in your autobiography. Uh, you know, he's half the man, you know, size wise, you know, from the time I met him. So I've seen you transform in. What's that? 60 kg gone forever 60 kilos gone yeah amazing and you look up you know inspirational and you, you can't even tell that you've gone through what you have gone through the last 12 months but if you guys want to check out obviously this next book you know just follow while he's your actual full name is your fan page is that right yes well ibrahim is the yep. uh fan page well muhammad ibrahim is the profile for those who want to friend me for also yep. more updates yeah 
yeah, absolutely. And yeah, as I said, he has quite a big following. So, you know, check out those things. And um, he and he's a very, very amazing coach. Um, you know, as you, as you can hear from... Your from student. Some, yeah. <laughs> what's that? Your student. Thank you. <laughs> You're my student. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week ahead. Um, and, um, and wishing you all the best. And I can't wait to obviously then read your autobiographical journey and, um, and, you know, stay well and keep strengthening. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate the, the meeting and the interview and we'll see you in Perth very soon. I believe. I hope so. Yes. I hope so. See you soon. Bye. Yeah. Bye. bye.